So, <laughs> who's your favorite artist? <laughs> hey guys, what's up? It's Emergency and welcome, welcome back to my channel. Today we are back and looking a little different. We'll address that in a little bit. Today we are talking about the brand new show that has came out on Prime Video called Swarm. And Swarm has gotten pretty popular because it comes from the minds of Donald Glover and Janine Neighbors, as well as the absolutely unexpected but talented star-studded cast with actors like Chloe Bailey, Damson Idris, Dominique Fishback, Billie Eilish, Ricky Thompson, and even Paris Jackson, Michael Jackson's daughter. And if you have not seen Swarm yet, I highly recommend you go and watch it because this will be a spoiler video. More so of a reaction and like first thoughts after watching it because I feel like this is one of those shows where you need to watch it a couple of times to get all of the meanings because it is so obscure. The show basically follows Dominique's character, Dre, who is an obsessive stan of this one superstar, Nyjah, who is meant to have a lot of parallels and basically symbolize Beyonce in real life. And through a bunch of trauma that she experiences, she then becomes a serial killer and is basically on a mission to unalive anyone that talks about Nyjah on Nyjah's internet. <laughs> so yeah, there's a lot going on there. A lot to talk about and a lot to break down, but before we do that, if you are new to the channel, and like all things TV, pop culture, Gen Z commentary, fashion, tier lists, I do it all. Make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss out on videos like that. I just recently posted a video talking about how Hollywood is trying to glamorize and make Gen Z feel bad for serial killers in media. And I think that's really ironic considering the next video that I cover, incidentally, has to be another serial killer video. <laughs> also, I had to make sure to follow me on my socials at Emergency on TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter, where I post more lifestyle content and show reactions to the shows I talk about here. And why I had to make sure to leave a like on this video because it helps out so, so much with the YouTube algorithm. But enough self promo, let's actually talk about Swarm. So through and through, I feel like this show was a complete mindfuck. And I've been trying to talk to different people in my life about this show because everyone has like a different take from it. Like some of my friends genuinely enjoyed this show and I am a part of that group. Like I enjoyed it for what it was and the fact that it didn't really give you a lot of answers. But on the other hand, I've been hearing from a few people that they just genuinely did not get or did not enjoy this show because it was such a mindfuck didn't answer any questions. So I have to say, just as a preface, if you have not seen this show, don't go in expecting any definite answers and don't go in expecting any traditional form of storytelling that you may be used to in like a show or movie. This simply is kind of just something you gotta experience, you know? Go in with no expectations and just write it out. Because in my opinion, while the story may be a little confusing or like non-traditional in the way that it's told, the actors and the production and everything behind this show is honestly top tier. Dominique Fishback ate down with this performance. Like, you cannot tell me that she was not acting down. I've seen people say on Twitter that Dre from Swarm is Black People's Pearl. I mean, I honestly love that because I honestly feel like it was so refreshing to see Dre as a character in this role because you don't really see black female serial killers ever in media, let alone depicted as like the anti-hero, like someone that you're meant to support, which kind of speaks to my last video that I was talking about, where it feels like more and more serial killer content is coming out now and you're not supposed to hate them. You don't agree with their actions and are kind of afraid of them, but you don't hate them. <laughs> like there's a fundamental level of respect and liking there. And I, with Dre, you know, I kind of see it. I get it, I see it. And what I find so interesting and so cryptic about this show is that it starts every episode by saying something like, all events, depictions, and characters that may seem or like resemble things in real life are intentional. Like, yeah. Like, based on the plot points, you can really see that. Like, like Nigel, who I said is like this Houston-based superstar that has this cult following called The Hive, is meant to resemble and reflect Beyonce and her beehive. And this is a very interesting take on standom and how far people would go to support and idolize these stars that they have never met and likely will never meet in their lives. And I found it really interesting and kind of funny that they recreated a lot of moments from real life in Beyonce's life in the show. Like they recreated the elevator fight scene with Solange, the Beyonce bite, as well as like the similar depictions of Beyonce stands. And that's coming from a Beyonce fan myself. And while this focus was heavily and very apparently comparable to Beyonce. I don't feel like this was meant to be exclusively about her. It really could be applied to a lot of superstars and their stands. Like when you think of fandoms that go hard for their fave, you could think of Beyonce, you could think of the Barb's, love them down. You, you could think of the fans of Nicki, love her down. Cardi, Taylor Swift, Ariana Grande, and even Billie Eilish, like the list goes on and on. The thing with Billie though, I, which I find really funny, is that in the show about a crazed fan, with her also being in the show, knowing her personal life and that she actually does have 
have experience with dealing with a crazed fan that would show up to her house and leave her threats like that claiming to really know her. It was just an interesting parallel that really just shows and drives home that while different aspects of this may be a fictional story, a lot of these experiences are very real and it's intended to be that way. And while we're on the topic of Billie, I was just genuinely so shocked by her performance in this show. Like she was only in the show for like an episode, but like I didn't know that she could act like that. Like the scene between Dre and Billy that is like used for promo and I feel like everyone has seen if you've seen anything about the show where they're like sitting across from each other and Billy's character's like name, chilling. I want to see more of Billy in like horror thriller because I think her energy, her voice and just general look goes very well with that. But I was genuinely impressed. Like, like I knew that Dominic Fishback was going to eat down. Like that was no surprise to me. Like I've been seeing her work for three episodes prior and I knew like, yeah, she's an actor. She's very talented. Like she's very, very talented. And even in that scene, Dominique was eating down with the line delivery, facial emotions and everything that came with it. But I was just genuinely shocked. Like I did not think that Billy had that in her. And while we're talking about the actors in the show, I do want to bring up one point that I've been seeing a lot specifically on Twitter that I wanted to address because I'm tired of this narrative and I'm tired of this being brought up over and over again. And it has to do with Chloe Bailey and Chloe's character, Marissa. So if you don't know, spoiler alert, in the first episode, pretty much in like the first 10 minutes of the show, there is a scene where Chloe's character is having mature fun with her character's boyfriend. And the scene itself isn't super crazy for TV standards, especially for an adult show on Prime Video or really HBO or like anything. It's just the fact that it's Chloe Bailey that people are really up in arms about. And my thing is this, Chloe has said herself that she was really nervous about filming this scene because she'd never really done a scene like that before. And she was already kind of weary about it. But for the show to actually come out and to have like that level of backlash towards Chloe for literally no reason, like people honestly act like they've never seen a super happy adult fun time scene on TV before. Like I feel like people are going out of their way and have been going out of their way to sort of shame Chloe or make her seem like she's something that she's not or make her like basically coming for her unwarrantedly. Like she is an actor and that's like just part of the scene. And I'm pretty sure that no one would have a problem if it was like any other actress. It's just that when Chloe Bailey's name is brought up, there's just such a vitriol. There's such an intense reaction. And for this, I'll say specifically when it comes to like the black community and even I'll niche it down even more, the shade room side of the black community, you know, where I feel like a lot of the criticism just is unwarranted. So yeah, leave Chloe alone. But going to the more positive side of things, one thing that I really enjoyed about this show, like really genuinely enjoyed about this show, was just seeing how many hands were involved in this and so many hands in my faves. Like this is genuinely a project made by the up and coming younger side of black Hollywood. And I really love to see that. Like having a show produced by Donald Glover and have parts of it be written and contributed to by people like Malia Obama is so dope. And to have one of the showrunners be a black woman is just so huge because I feel like that's just not common. And to have black women and just black people in general in the writer's room is just so refreshing. And that's not even mentioning like the talent involved. Like a lot of people involved in this are just younger talent and are just newer faces in black Hollywood that are on the rise. Like again, you have Chloe, Dominique, Ricky Thompson, which was so shocking. And I was so happy to see that Ricky was in this. Like he had a real short cameo, but I love me some Ricky Thompson and I love seeing his success in honestly upwards mobility from just social media star to now actor and to whatever is next. Like love, love to see Ricky stand through and through. But this really was a breath of fresh air, especially considering if you've been subscribed for a while and you've seen some of my past videos on how a lot of times writers rooms tend to be pretty homogenous and don't really get it, you know? I feel like more strides were made here just because the writers room looked a little bit more diverse. But let's actually talk about the writing. Let's talk about the story for a little bit because I do have some thoughts and opinions. So like I said, the show is very unconventional in its storytelling. Like the general plot of it is kind of murky and changes a little bit. Like you think like the main plot is having Dre finally meet Nyjah, but then it also branches off into Dre trying to take out all of these Nyjah haters. But then we got a mockumentary episode that's meant to give a little bit of context and background to Dre and what her big secret is because she mentions in episode four about an event that changed her where she realized that she enjoys the act and whole experience of the unalivable process. And she's kind of big about the story in episode four, but in episode six, we get to know her background. We get to know exactly what happened with her. But even then you're unsure what to believe, what's true and what's not, because it is like this dramatized, version of like this one detective trying to put together all the pieces, which makes it kind of confusing because Dre is an unreliable narrator and you're unsure of whether the detective or that episode is also meant to be unreliable narration or if that is just like the truth, like that is what's happening. Like episode six really did feel like a departure from the series while also providing that needed 
insight because I feel like at least while I was watching, I was in it, like I was really invested, but I was just really wondering like, all right, she's killed a lot of people now. Like, why is no one looking for her? Why is she not facing any repercussions for her actions? Like, especially as a black person in America, like how is she committing all these crimes and getting away with all this? Especially since the first ones really had no rhyme or reason to them. And she did not do any Joe Goldberg stuff of like trying to hide her tracks or really do anything worthwhile of like hiding the fact that someone was unalived, at least for the first couple ones. So episode six was nice because you're like, okay, people are actually taking notice of this. Like, or people are actually worried about this. People meaning just that one detective. And she has a really interesting line, which I feel like is half a joke, but also kind of real where she talks about how she's gotten away with this for so long and that the detective has brought this up to multiple different police officers in different headquarters, but no one's taking it seriously. And she says, this wouldn't be the first time that black women have fallen through the cracks, which I feel like is an interesting commentary because yeah, that that's very much true, especially when it comes to black women's needs, either medically, professionally, emotionally, physically, really all of them. Historically, those needs have been overlooked, gaslit, and just ignored overall. So having such a violent display of emotion that clearly has been explained to come from somewhere darker or from like neglected needs was an interesting take to include in the show. And I feel like there's so much symbolism and like meaning in this series, or at least I hope there is because it kind of gave me the feeling after I finished it of like, wow, I have more questions than I started with. <laughs> and I feel like that's primarily the reason why this video is more of a reaction than like a breakdown because I've only seen this once and I don't feel like I've gotten the full scope of everything that's gone down or the full meaning of everything. Like for the final episode for the finale, I was kind of left confused. Like why when Dre finally met Nyjah did she see Marissa's face or Chloe's character's face as Nyjah? Why was Nyjah so cool and chill about bringing Dre on stage and then driving home with her? Why did Nyjah not remember the face of the girl that bit her? You know, was this all real or was it a dream? Like, again, we know that Dre is an unreliable narrator, so we don't know if this was real. If it was not real, was it meant to mean anything, if at all? Or was this just like a giant F you to the audience being like, oh, you thought you knew how this was gonna end, but no, you didn't. Like, I, my brain hasn't fully processed everything that I've seen. <laughs> so I love to know if you have any ideas or if you know for sure in the comment section below to like, let me know because I truly gagged and Googled. Like I have no thoughts, no clue. <laughs> one piece of symbolism or one theme that I did find really interesting though, is the fact that multiple times they emphasize how Dre doesn't eat anything but junk food. And that's actually one of the ways that the detective was able to catch on to Dre was that she literally would only eat junk food and when given the option to eat something healthy, she would struggle to or would have like some kind of adverse reaction, which could definitely be linked to some form of trauma response because eating habits healthy or not can be attributed to a lot of things that go on in childhood. And we know clearly from her background that she'd had a messed up childhood, but we also don't get a lot of information on what that childhood is or like what happened after she got disowned or what happened after she got sent back home to foster care. Like there's just so many questions, so many different levels to it that I just feel like are missing. And I can understand why people wouldn't like the show because of that. I personally am still a big fan of it just because I enjoyed my experience while watching it. I just wish that there were more to it. And the way that it ended definitely didn't give me vibes that there was going to be like a season two or anything like this is definitely giving limited series, you know? Like this is a time, a place, a moment, and it doesn't feel like there's gonna be anything more from this. But yeah, those are all the thoughts that I have on this for right now. I wanna hear from you, honestly. Like, what did you think about Swarm? Did you like it? Did you not like it? Did you get some of the deeper meanings or did you think that this was kind of trash? I've also been seeing some discourse on Twitter about people not liking it because Donald Glover was a part of this and there's a bunch of tea with that. Are you one of those people or do you not care? Let me know all of your thoughts in the comments below. I really wanna chat with y'all down there. If you enjoyed this kind of content and have not already, really make sure to subscribe. We're getting really close to 200K and you want to be here before 200K, I'm just saying. Don't forget to follow me on my socials at Emergency. Leave a like on this video. But other than that, y'all, I've been Emergency, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.